Hi everyone, welcome to our webinar series on IRICAD. Thank you very much for attending. This is our third webinar in the series. A quick introduction of our team. Uh, my name is Graham Hutchinson. I'm with Nelson Irrigation here at Walla Walla, Washington. Mike Noftal is an independent consultant in Washington State. Steve McCoon with Nelson Irrigation here in Walla Walla. Joe Vivier is the global support person for, for IRICAD stationed in New Zealand. And Ignacio Del Campo is with uh, Nelson Irrigation in Chile. Uh, here is the complete schedule. We are at number three, and uh, Joe Vivier is going to present the session on Google Earth import. Uh, it is uh, tomorrow at 8 a.m. in New Zealand, so Joe has graciously uh, come back in time to uh, present this for us, so I'll hand over to Joe. Good morning, everybody. So this session is about importing and exporting images and elevation data from Google Earth. So hopefully you can see my screen there. To be able to use the import from Google Earth tools, you will need to obtain an API key from Google. This is done through the Google Cloud Console and instructions on how to do this can be found on the ERICAD Users Forum in the How To section. You will be required to input your credit card details. Your credit card will not be charged if you set the budget to under the $200 free monthly allowance. Definitely for an individual, it would be very difficult to exceed this budget. Unfortunately, Google do change things occasionally, but please work through the steps and if you have any problems, please let us know. Even though the screens may look slightly differently from time to time, just make sure that the options that you see in the images in our how-to uh, have the same uh, items enabled. When you enter your project name, it's probably a good idea to put ERICAD into the name that you've decided to use so that you can always relate that API key with your ERICAD import from Google Earth. You will need to enter all your information, including your name, address and credit card details. Then you get to the part where you need to select your project, which will be the ERICAD GE import utility that I'd set up, and enable the required APIs for what we need to use. We will need the MAPS elevation, MAPS JavaScript, MAPS static and places. If you can't see the items that you need in the screen, you can search for the required API. Select each one individually and enable. Once you've enabled the four that you require, you'll be able to go to the credentials and get it to create an API key for you. I've hidden mine, I don't want everyone to use it. <laughs> um, so once your API key has been activated, save that to a safe place. You'll then want to restrict the key and enable the four APIs to be restricted. That information will then be used in the ericad ge import.ini file, which will be in your ericad installation folder. You can open the file in Notepad. Joe, there was a question. Um, 
and they ask, do you know how, uh, how many imports will be within the budget of that uh, $200? Um, at a guess, well, it depends how many rows of elevation data you import, but you're looking probably a minimum of 40 a month. Okay, so the Erica GE import.ini file is contained within your Ericad installation folder. There is an entry there called GM API key, and this is where your API key lives. So I'm just taking that out because I'm going to show you that in version 18 and onwards, you don't need to go to this file. Whoops, it was the wrong one. So I have backups everywhere. So that in Ericad, in version 18 or newer, as soon as you act in the Google Earth utility, if there is no API key in your INI file, you can simply input it there and it will write to your INI file for you. So you don't need to go looking for the file. But for older versions, you will still need to input it into the INI file. So after you have it obtained the API key, you can use the import from Google Earth or import from Google Earth with KML options. When you act in the import from Google Earth tool, a secondary window will pop up and you'll be able to navigate where you want to go. You can zoom and pan, type in the closest town, or enter lats and longs. Or if someone has sent you a KML file, you can use the import from Google Earth with KML. And it will take you directly to the location with any markers that the previous person has entered. So it's a little bit slow sharing over the internet. Once you're ready to select the data that you want, notice the checkboxes at the top. Import image on off. You may not wish to import the image, only the elevation data. Rectify image on off. Note that this should be on because the process is translating from a curved to a flat surface. Import elevations on off. You may not wish to import the elevation data, only the image particularly if you have elevations from a different source. When importing the elevation data, select the number of rows of spot heights from the drop-down list. Note that if there is not much elevation change over the selected area, we recommend selecting the lowest number of rows of the spot heights from the drop-down list rather than more. 
This will provide a better representation of calculating contours from the spot height data. For the image importation, if there are options for the resolution of the images to import, the medium and large options will be higher resolution and may consist of multiple tile grabs on the IRICAD screen for the entire area imagery. So the tiled imagery will depend on the size of the area and the selected resolution. For a medium option, up to nine tiles can be created and imported. For a large option, up to 25 tiles can be created and imported. When you're ready, click the import icon and enable the checkbox after having read and understood the message. Then draw a rectangle to encompass the area that you're interested in by clicking two diagonal points. After the second click, the image with the elevations, if enabled, will be imported into IRICAD. So that's just doing your tiled imagery screen grabs so that the resolution is better than under the standard mode. Now we have the image and we also have spot heights. Note that the image is not completely rectangular. This is because of the rectification. Also note that the imported elevation contours and spot heights are on the elevations layer. The image itself will be on the GE layer and the spot heights are not orthogonal to the image but to the XY plane. One thing that we can do with imported spot heights is we can calculate the contours from the spot height data. This will just give us a visual representation of the underlying elevation data. We can set the required elevation uh, contour level and we can see the number of contour levels we're going to get with this interval. I'm also going to place the contours on to a different layer. The GE elevations layer is empty and this is so that I can turn off my spot heights without turning off my contours. Because these elevations are calculated, they cannot be edited. If you have a problem in your elevation data, you should fix it before you create contours. And we can also run highlight elevations on these to color code uh, with, the, with the height. So the red are your top high points and the blue are your low points. When exporting back to KML or viewing in Google Earth, it is best to turn off the imported Google Earth image. Note that only layers that are on will be exported to KML. So you might wish to turn off the junctions just to give it that cleaner look. We'll select view, view in Google Earth. and we can see the details of the design.
if you are exporting to a KML file, then we have control over the export settings. Named objects are objects such as control valves, areas, water supplies that get a name. So zone one, water supply one, area one, etc. Objects are other items such as pipes. So do you want the description exported with it or a label set um, identifier? Um, you can choose what you want to do with that. And you can also export elevations with KML which you cannot export out of Ericad in any other format um, to ret retain the elevation data. If you have information from different sources that is not in WGS84 projection, then when importing from Google Earth, the image will end up far away from the uh, rest of the information. So here's the image and here is the survey data that was sent to us. Since version 17, we've been able to set the datum so that we have more control over where the data comes in so that we can marry up the different sources. If you go to grid origin GIS, and set the GIS settings. Because I had already imported from Google Earth, it has preset my UTM zone, which is 59 South for this area of New Zealand. But I still would need to manually select the data that I have been told that this data is in. So now when I import from Google Earth, and bring in the selected area, it should be in the same position as the surveyor's data. Okay, because the image has been imported last, it will sit on top of the other drawing items until we change the Z order and move to back. Also, when we go to view in Google Earth, if you have a design that you have done, uh, which was not based on a Google Earth image or on a survey drawing using the WGS84 coordinates, you can simply set that datum before you view in Google Earth. So remember to set the UTM zone correctly and the, uh, the datum that the information used.
Now let's look at some other problems that are commonly associated with importing from Google Earth. The main issue is the uh, Google API key. If you don't have a Google API key, you should visit the how-to forum that we looked at earlier and follow those steps. However, if the utility does not work anymore, or you can't get it to work after obtaining an API key, you can follow our forum post in the support FAQs if Google Earth import stopped working. One of the main tips in this post, apart from listing the commonly uh, seen problems, is the ability to be able to do some troubleshooting within the newer version of the uh, version 18 import from Google Earth Utility. If you right click near the um, where it says import from Google Earth, you can select show dev tools. And this will provide you information that can be very, very helpful. Um, don't uh, notice the, the first one that's always there, but if there's anything else going on that is stopping that flow of traffic, um, then it will be listed here. So the commonly seen problems are uh, if you have tiled words for development purposes only across the image, is usually caused by billing not being enabled on your Google account. So we have a link here which will take you directly to enabling billing for an existing key. If there's a blank white screen, then the DevTools console tab may return a message such as failed to load resource. And that's typically caused by the firewall stopping traffic between your computer and Google Maps. So you should talk to your IT about that, or just to make sure you can try connecting to the internet via a different way, such as from a mobile hotspot, or taking the laptop home and trying it from home and seeing if you can get through. If there's a grey screen that says, oops, something went wrong, then the console tab will probably provide the, the clue that you need to know uh, what the cause is. And typically we've seen that a required API has not been activated or hasn't been restricted in the cloud console. So you should check the credentials area. Uh, even though in version 18 you can pop in your API key into that little field if it's not present in the INI file, uh, but you can actually cancel that dialog and you will get an image loading with the words the for development purposes only, and it will probably be quite a dark image rather than a bright looking image. Uh, so you'll need to go and obtain your API key and pop it into the, the INI file or through the little dialog when you next run import from Google Earth. If your API key is incomplete or incorrect, then you will get a message about the API key being invalid and you should check your credentials. Remember to keep a copy of your API key elsewhere. What I've done is I just keep a copy of the whole INI file, the ERICAD GE import INI file in an upper level of the ERICAD folder. So if I am uninstalling or reinstalling, that I'm not accidentally knocking that off before I've retrieved it. And of course, if you are still experiencing any issues, then please let us know about that. Now, the last thing I want to show you about, um, sorry, I'll just need to close this, or tell you about importing from Google Earth is that version 18 is DPI aware. So that means if you've increased your text display for your computer, you previously had to enter the, uh, the ratio into the INI files, but you no longer need to do that. Eric, it will do that automatically. 
So I hope this has been helpful and informative. Back to you, Graham. Thank you, Joe. We have a, a few questions. Um, one question is, uh, is it possible to change the symbols when a design is viewed in Google Earth? For example, the valve symbol is different from the valve symbol in ERICAD. It's a completely different symbol. So the question was whether it's possible to configure the symbols that are used when you view in Google Earth. No, there isn't currently any way to do that. Okay. And another similar question was, uh, sometimes the Google Earth images that come into ERICAD are not as new as what you can see on Google Earth standalone. So what happened is when we first started the import from Google Earth Utility, the API was actually using uh, Google Earth itself. Mm -hmm. uh, Google had issues with that program and therefore they deprecated it, basically making it unavailable and knocked it off. And so their new system is actually through Google Maps. And unfortunately, we have no control over what imagery we actually get through that. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Joe. We appreciate your time very much, and we know it's early over there. Uh, our next uh, webinar is uh, this Thursday, January the 14th, uh, 11 a.m. Pacific Time USA, and it will be on the design process and design options. So once you've got a, a system drawn, it will go through the details of the design and ex an explanation of the different options, analyze, velocity, linear program, detailed analysis, that sort of thing. So thank you very much um, for attending. We will send out a recording, probably an email later today with the links for all three of the first webinars in the same email, a link to the recording. Thank you very much, everyone.